Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Untold Stories of Berks County Artists. This is made possible, and we are grateful for that, by the Pennsylvania Partner for the Arts, the Berks Arts Council, and the Why I'm Missing Foundation. And we have been meeting the most interesting people here on the People Chronicles in this series. And at the ripe old age of 16, <laughs> Let me please introduce to you Jeffett Jaime. How are you? I'm good, Joe. How are you? I'm wonderful. <laughs> I'm amazed by what you're doing. I mean, at 16, you've already had art shows, correct? Yes. And where were they? Um, I've had an art show. The first art show I've ever had was in Olive Boys and Girls Club, Oak mm -hmm. Brook. Mm -hmm. And that was like the commence of everything, was the spark that. How long ago was won. that? That was just last year. And do you, in March. do you go to Olivet? Yeah, I do. Okay. I've been volunteering there for three years. You volunteer there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So was the art show your idea? Yeah, it was. Excellent. Yeah. And that was the beginning of what? You said that was the beginning. Um, it was kind of the beginning of me wanting to keep going with this. Okay. Wanted to create more art shows and show people what I could do with my talent. In your bio, you talk about the kinds of mediums mm -hmm. that you use. And I believe one of the first ones is cardboard. And I thought that was really interesting. And then you said book art and acrylic and watercolor. So I read this and I'm trying to get a visual. And here all along, it's been right before me. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me first about book art and how did that come about? Um, well, I was at home one day and mm -hmm. I wanted, cause I'm always painting, right? And I wanted to create something different that people would be like, wow, how you made that? So. In my room, there's a whole bunch of books, lots and lots and lots. And I was thinking to myself, what can I make with a book? So that's wow. what came to my head, and I started creating book art. That's, that's creative genius. Mm -hmm. Most people look at a book and they go, what can I read? And you said, what could I make out of that? Yeah. So you've, in addition to, where was the inspiration for this? Does it have anything to do with the title of the book? No. No? I don't. It's the same. The, Another book of butterflies, and I a just wanted, book of butterflies. wanted okay. to cut out the butterflies. And I saw some other of your book art. It's, in fact, on display here at the People Chronicles at 505. Mm -hmm. um, some of you just folded the pages differently yeah. and actually with the foldings made something come out of the yeah. book. Just you fold the pages and it makes a type of design. Um, there's something called origami, which origami. is all about folding. Mm -hmm. Did you learn that? Yeah, I know how to do origami. Yeah, I've learned that. Was that your influence ago. for this? Mm, not really. I just wanted to see what I could do with a book. Start playing with mm -hmm. the book. Start playing around. And then you said a medium is cardboard, and I thought, hmm. So I'm trying to get it. You, you took very everyday items, yeah. and you're seeing art, and then you brought this piece behind you. Can you tell me about that? Um, that piece was for a Black History Month art show for 2016. It was in February at the Gaps Gallery, oh. and it was a show run by Ed Terrell. He does it every year, and I, you know, I wanted to make something that would look really nice and mean something. So it's um, Martin Luther King and Obama, and like two hands shaking, and the chains are breaking. Like there's no more slavery. I love it. Mm -hmm. And there's where you incorporated in in a three D format the cardboard. Yeah, the cardboard. And the faces. You told me you like to paint faces or draw faces. Yeah. What is it about faces? Um, I don't know, there's something about, fa I like making abstract faces and mm -hmm. there's just something about making abstract faces. You could put different shapes into it and just do it in different ways. And I like doing the eyes and close one of the eyes. I always do one of the, sometimes one of the eyes like closed, like if it's blinking. Are you influenced by Picasso at all? Yeah, Picasso, I I, Picasso I, was it, a yeah. huge influence when I was in elementary school. When I was in um, Lowish Park, that's all I studied about. Really? Like, always. Almost every single day. So what is it about Picasso's art that draws you in? How it was, it was his, his techniques, what he used, and cubism, I think, was one of his things that he did. He made a lot of faces, too, so yeah, that's what I liked about his style. See, and I'll be very honest with you. When you say cubism, I don't know what that means, but I know Picasso and, and faces. Mm -hmm. So tell me about cubism. Cubism, um, it's basically, everything's cubed when he does cubism, it's all squared. Like if he makes a face, he's gonna put a whole bunch of squares and cubes in it. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you like doing that? Yeah. When you see a face, 
Like for example, if you're walking down the street and as you're seeing different people and you see faces, is your eye and your mind seeing the visual art that you could do, the ways you could draw that, whether it's with dots like you did behind you, the, the very meticulous dots, or, or something more graphic? Um, I, don't, I really don't know. It could be different. I mean, you walk down the street every day and you see different people and you'd be like, you know, you look at them, how can I make this into something? So you do see that as yeah, you're I looking mm -hmm. at people? Yeah. So that's an artist's eye. Where did this come from? <laughs> that's funny. Um, my brother, it came from the household, I think, because there's my mom and my brother do art. Uh -huh. So it was, I guess, when I was young, always seeing them do art. What kind of art do they do? My brother draws a lot, and then my mom's always doing crafts and making things. And okay. She was, she was always paints too, so I... So there's an artistic mm -hmm. gene in your family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have they carried it to the extent that you have? Um, no. No, they have not. So there was something about that first show yeah, at was. Olivet that did something for you. It, yeah. it lit a spark. Mm -hmm. It did lit a spark. How would you describe that spark? I, it felt good. Yeah? It felt good because a lot of people came out to the show and they were complimenting my art and mm -hmm. saying that I got a, you know, a natural talent and that I should keep going with it and never give up. So that was kind of like motivation for me to keep going. When you put that show together, did you realize or were you hearing that, that you, you have a gift? Because mm -hmm. you're, you're very young, quite frankly, at 16, and you have a lot of art already and you're staging shows. So that kind of sets you apart from students who are you know, making art for art classes or projects. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. know that. Yeah. What's your goal? Where do you want to go with this? Um, in the future, I want to open up a art center, youth mm -hmm. art center, where kids can come and do art, and we could do art shows for them, and people could come in and look at their art, even buy their art if they want to. I want to motivate kids to, if they like art, to keep doing what they like to do. That's pretty cool, mm -hmm. that you're honing in on youth specifically. So as, as a teenager, yeah. or as a child, when you were a toddler and growing up and going through elementary school. What did art do for you that helped you grow? Um, it was, I don't know, art is kind of like an escape for me mm -hmm. when I'm feeling like down or something. It's always, I don't know, it's always going to be there and I like doing it. So, and it was Laos Park that kind of nurtured that talent. What did they do? What happened there? They, they motivated me. Like I always uh -huh. say, they really, really motivated me. Like that was first stages of motivation for me because I used to do pop-up pop-up books you don't you open a book and like yes. a picture pops up now when you say you used to do them you made those yeah I made those wow I used to make pop-up books and that was like the start that's pretty tricky actually mm -hmm. to be able to do yeah. that so you're gonna have your own gallery and you're going to encourage students to use this for an outlet there are so many you're not the first artist to say it's an outlet for me um, but it's a very healthy outlet. Yeah, it is. So it's nice for you to have that goal to share that with others and inspire them yeah. in a healthy manner as well. One last question, okay? This is the untold stories of Berks County artists. So Jeffette, what's one thing that you might want to share about you that maybe most people don't know? Well, one thing that almost everybody doesn't know, except my parents, that every time I'm creating art, I do it on the floor in my room. Oh, wow. Yep. That is on very cool. So that's your inspirational space. You're yeah. <laughs> on the floor. floor. <laughs> now I'm looking at these and going, okay, that was on the floor in your mm -hmm. room. Every single piece on the floor in my room. That is very cool. I am, I am happy to have met you, and I wish you the very best on your journey because you. I see quite a bright future. And I think it's pretty cool that already you want to pay it forward and pay yes. it back. So that's cool. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time and sharing your story. Thank you. You're welcome.